So the professional wrestling world got some sad news delivered on Thursday as we found out that all-time legend, the king, handsome Harley Race, had lost his battle with lung cancer at the age of 76. Now, you could say, as wrestling fans were used to, unfortunately, the announcements of wrestlers that we're familiar with, wrestlers that we grew up with, wrestlers that we watched for years, uh, passing away. But at least we could say in this case that Harley Race, for God's sakes, most certainly lived a full, full life and got more out of his 76 years than a lot of people would get out of 100 or 126. But it was really good to see the outpouring of just admiration and respect for one of the true, real legends of professional wrestling in the King Harley race. You, you talk about a guy whose career spanned multiple decades. He was one of the biggest names in the history of the sport, made territories boom, helped elevate others. Like You could go on and on with all the accomplishments with Harley Race, but when I think of Harley Race, as much as anything else, and I think this is where the element of admiration and respect is coming from, from a lot of fans, even those like me, who really didn't watch him in the peak of his career in the 70s and the early 80s. You know, I caught him more on the tail end in the mid-80s and as he came to WWF, um, and even then I could appreciate that that was a badass dude. And when you look at Harley Race, I think where the admiration and respect come from in a lot of ways is it's just a reminder of an era gone by. It's a reminder of the way things used to be back, at, from a fan standpoint at least, a much more innocent time in professional wrestling. Where the wrestlers were real, and you thought everything that happened was real, and the consequences were real. I mean, my God, you look at Harley Race... You could take one look at him, and he was never a big cut dude by any stretch of the imagination. You know, he was a big dude, but he was never swole. He was never a roid freak or anything like that. You were never going to sit there and draw money based off of his pure physique, but draw money the man did for multiple decades. You just got the sense that this was a dude, like this was a man, a real man. A man's man. And even as you go back now and you see people posting clips of old interviews and old promos and how straight-laced he was and how serious he was, it worked so well for Harley Race because he didn't have to be a gimmick. He could be Harley Race and it was 100% legit, 100% real. You felt it, you sensed it, you believed it, he owned it. When you talk about badasses in the history of professional wrestling, you know, guys like Meng Haku will always be brought up as number one. Well, that's deserved. But Harley Race is always thought of on that Mount Rushmore. And that is also deserved. And when you think about Harley Race and the time that he was in the wrestling business, when you were the world champ especially, the NWA world's heavyweight champion, eight times over, as he would say, you had to be that dude. You had to be the guy all day, every day, everywhere you damn went because the wrestlers were going to try you. They were going to try and fuck you over. They were going to try and go into business for themselves. The promoters were going to try and fuck you and go into business for themselves. The fans were going to try and fuck you over and they were going to come after you because, oh, you're not that tough. You're one of them fake wrestlers. I can beat your ass. So everywhere you went, you had to be on guard. Everywhere you went, you had to be that dude. And could you imagine being the idiot that went into a bar and went up to Harley Race and wanted to pick a fight with him? How do you think that would go? Not well. Not well. Not well at all. But there's just there's something about guys like Harley Race. You go back and look at him and you watch him and it's like, you wish you could take guys that seriously now when it comes to wrestling. It's either midgets or guys with bodies and nothing else. Where you think of 
professional wrestler and whatever that could mean. And that could mean all different types of shapes, sizes, characters, performers, styles, and so forth. But you know what I mean? Like, you look at Harley Race and you know you see a professional wrestler. If you saw him walking down the street and somebody said, that's the NWA World's Heavyweight Champion, that's Harley Race. He's a professional wrestler. Nobody would doubt it. And nobody with brains would be stupid enough to try him. And you think about the story of Harley Race. This is a guy that started off as a gopher, I think, back when he was 15, 16 years old, running errands and so forth for a professional wrestling group, and then eventually got broken into the business. So at a tough time with tough guys in a tough business where you, know, you could have a heart attack in the ring and die. And the guys didn't really care because they were more concerned about opening a spot up for somebody else at a time where kayfabe was not about protecting the business from fans. It was about protecting guys' spots and keeping people out of the business. This kid broke in at a very, very young age and went on to become one of the highest level champions of all time. And when you think about his story in particular, back in the early 60s, this was a man who at one point in time, his career was almost over before it really got started. He got into a really bad car accident with his first wife, who was pregnant at the time. They had only been married about five weeks. She ultimately died instantly. He ended up surviving, but almost needed to have his leg amputated. The promoter steps in, says, don't amputate it, kind of over my dead body type of deal. Harley Race recovers and goes on to have the great legendary career he did, first as a tag team wrestler in the 60s and as he went on to become a singles competitor in the 70s. Like, you think about some of the stuff the dude had to overcome. You also think about the funny stories of tough guy shit that you hear over the years about him chasing people around with tasers and when Owen Hart tried to rig Mick Foley by pouring a bunch of hot sauce on the spoon and then it got into the chili, Harley Race came back and tased his fucking ass. You imagine Owen Hart being like, don't tase me, bro. <laughs> You're talking about Harley Race that pulled a gun on Hogan and Fl uh, the fucking Funk Brothers in the 80s when they were in Kansas City. Like, this dude was no bullshit. Who was the story of he pulled out a gun and shot somebody with blanks? Like, you didn't fuck with Harley Race. You didn't cross Harley Race. And, and again, why the hell would you? But this dude here, man, he was tough as nails. He was just a badass. You know, the thing you say, like, if you have to go out of your way to try and make somebody look cool, maybe they're not so cool after all. Well, same thing. If a guy has to go above and beyond and out of his way to either A, have everybody tell you how much of a badass he is, or B, he has to tell everybody, more importantly, how much of a badass he is, he's probably not that much of a badass. See a lot of these MMA fuck sticks that go to the dojos once or twice a week and practice their Brazilian jiu-jitsu, and now they think they can beat everybody's ass under the sun when nothing could be further from the truth. Harley Race didn't have to tell you. He may have, and who the fuck could tell him otherwise. A lot of other people would tell you, but they didn't have to. You just knew it. You understood it. You got it. You're like, that's a badass man. That's a man's man. By God, that is a freaking professional wrestler. And I miss the days when you had wrestlers like that. And again, it wasn't about over-the-top gimmicks or incredible, outgoing, extroverted personality. You know, Harley was very reserved in the way he presented and conducted and carried himself. He was very measured. He was very calm, but deadly serious. And it was that deadly seriousness that could suck everybody in and, by God, make you believe. And you know he had the ability to draw money. He wouldn't have been an eight-time NWA World Heavyweight Champion if he couldn't. It's just, when you think about it, you see the outpouring of love and respect that came out uh, to, on Thursday for Harley Race. You get it and you understand it. And if you want to know just how fucking cool Harley Race was, if you want to know just how much of a tough guy Harley Race was, and if you want to know just how much 
respect, hardly race commanded. You can look it up on YouTube. Ole Anderson doesn't have anything bad to say about him. Ole freaking Anderson! Better old angry man yells at clouds for everything. Nothing bad to say about Harley Race. If he passes Ole Anderson's tough guy test, he probably passes everybody else's. But again, it is just a reminder of what professional wrestling used to be, and in some cases, what we wish it could be, uh, but will never be again. So long live the king, long live handsome Harley Race. Thank you for all the memories and the impact and the legacy you left on the professional wrestling business.